It's one month into spring here in Coma, and that means we're 10 degrees above freezing and hip deep in yard sales. This is Coma News Daily. The internet broadcast news source portal for the town of Coma. This newscast would not be possible without our wonderful sponsors at Liquid Ham. Liquid Ham tastes great. <laughs> whose generous donations of expired products allowed most of Coma News Daily's staff to survive this past winter. I'm Dr. Jimmy, coma physician and pasty raver, reading you the news as reported by the trash and news scavenging staff at Coma News Daily. And as always, I'm Dee Collins, sometimes wife, screenwriter, local artisan, joining Jimmy remotely from under our bed at home because I saw some terrifying hair pieces and plastic surgery recently reading the news on cable TV. So everything good at home these days, Dee? From what I can see from under the bed, everything is just dandy. How's everything in that sad little condo complex you now call home? Well, a home for those guys, the assisted living complex for recently divorced men, will never be Mayberry, but it has provided a place of peace for me and the other fellows to learn to heal together. Oh, so excessive healing was the reason the Coma Sheriff's Office was called out there last week? Hey, kids! Oh, look, it's our good friend, Shane Darvish. That's right, local thespian and director of various Coma Midnight Player Productions. Well, let's say we go ahead and get to some news. Hooray! Recently, we learned that tragedy is just one serious conversation away. That's why the Coma Town Council last week banned all serious conversations in cars, trucks, or on bicycles on Coma roadways, said Councilwoman Natalie Peters. Research has demonstrated that hands-free phones do nothing to reduce distracted driving if the driver is engaged in serious conversation. So the solution was obvious. She expects drivers will have no problem filling their trips instead with the meaningless prattle or even fart jokes if they must. Mayor Dave Anderson said previous hands-free device requirements did nothing to address distracted driving among occupants of a vehicle. Addressing the death of a loved one, the kids being missing, or an escaped convict on the loose are all serious conversations, and they can all wait, Anderson said. The new ban will be promoted through a campaign called, quote, Seriously, Wait. It followed previous distracted driving bans on pets and vehicles, known as the Lassie Stay Home campaign, eating in vehicles, under the Drop It Tubby slogan, and Children in Vehicles, simply called Bye Kids. The lone dissenting council member, Jack Sowen, worried that the ban would place an undue burden on coma drivers. Quote, Look, no one can avoid being at least momentarily serious, Owen said. I'm one of the funniest people I know, and even I have a hard time coming up with enough gut-busting musings to fill all of the time it takes to drive my mom to her various doctor's appointments. Robert McGinnis said he was disappointed in the latest ban. How in good conscience can these so-called leaders allow the defenseless sheep of this town to even get behind the wheel, McGinnis said in an apparent reference to residents. From now on, McGinnis plans to save all of his important calls for unicycle trips around town. The Coma Foot Bucket has decided to expand itself into the artisanal space. So join us in listening to this ad from our sponsor, the Artisanal Foot Bucket. Where can you find non-industrially prepared animal feet? Using all natural recipes, lovingly handed down to generation to generation. An occasion to hand some the flavor and smell of life. The artisanal foot bucket is brought to you by some of the most passion and gifted artisans. Crafting foot and hoof based meals today are locally sourced, organic, and antic market free. Animal feet are always cage free and fancy free. So come join the Farm Feet to People Movement. Farm Fresh Feet. Bucket. It's time to get some feet. How about the animal's family foot bucket with four sides? What about a hoof wrap? Have you tried our PD Puddle Popcorn Feet? 
Have you tried sucking the fried sodas? It's just toe nuggets. Why does people love us so much? At the food bucket, it's not just fast food, it's fun food. Food bucket. Our next news story calls to mind the question what's tall, dark, and hairy? Death. And smells terrible? Death. And loves trash? Death. No D, Sasquatch. Oh. According to Coma News Daily employee and part-time Taco Bell enthusiast Chase Donovan, a hairy ape-like creature routinely visits the Taco Bell where he eats at least once or twice each month and has been doing so for the past six months. Donovan, who eats at the popular fast food restaurant chain every other day and sometimes has eaten there twice a day over the past year, said the creature typically comes late at night, right before closing, and has a voracious appetite. The first couple times he came in, I didn't realize he was Bigfoot because he was wearing sunglasses, so it was hard to tell, Donovan said. But then, one time he came in and just smelled worse than anything else I've smelled in my life. That's when I looked, took a closer look and realized he was a big, hairy, ape-like creature. Plus, he's like seven feet tall or something. So that was a giveaway, too. According to Donovan, the creature usually orders enough food to feed a family of four, and it's hard to understand when ordering his food relying on a series of grunts and gestures at the menu board behind the cashier. He likes the cheesy gordita crunch and the beefy five-layer layer burrito, Donovan said. He went completely nuts when we recently started selling the loaded potato griller and the beefy nacho griller. I hope I'm not here when he finds out that they've ended that promotion. Some Taco Bell employees aren't convinced the mysterious creature is a Sasquatch. According to drive through attendant Matt McPherson, the strange creature is a local patron named Hank Cummings. Hank is really into herbs and spices, if you know what I mean. He doesn't shower much and gets munchies big time, McPherson said. Until proven otherwise, Donovan is sticking to his claims that the creature is a Sasquatch. He plans to gather physical proof next time the beast eats at the restaurant. In business news this week, we can learn how various coma trend weavers are leading our town into the 21st century of high-tech commerce. Pan House, Spantech, and Speedpan may sound like needlessly technical industry jargon, and it definitely is, but those gobbledygook terms are really about one thing, helping people and business. Pantech 2015 recently wrapped its annual meeting for panhandling contractors at the Coma Convention Center and Grain Silo, and Coma residents will be among the first to benefit from the fruits of that convergence of industry thought leaders, innovators, and hangers-on. For instance, Coma will be the location for the first pan house mixed-use development, which will intersperse 100 square foot tiny houses in the alleys and sidewalks surrounding Coma businesses. These will house contract panhandlers employed by Coma business leader Davis Montgomery III. The mixed used vision of worker bees being able to live where they work will finally be realized with this project, which I call Peekaboo Village, Montgomery said. Another Pantech innovation the town can expect to see is the eye-catching look of Spantech. This groundbreaking clothing line has been described as spandex body suits covered in a multitude of pockets, which can hold any denomination of currency or coin. Why shouldn't the Panpro be as physically active and healthy as the rest of us, said Natalie Peters. He plans to invest in roving teams of bike riding pan pros. This approach aims to take panhandling out of its traditional setting downtown and spread it to suburban neighborhoods and parks. Who's more likely to have quick access to spare cash than the guy watering his lawn or rolling his trash to the curb, Peters said. Was that a flash that just passed your car? No, it was a pan pro. Another place Coma residents will get to interact with pan pros are on any area road. Coma Mayor Dave Anderson, who also plans to launch a pan business employing contractors, said his research determined state and local laws allow at-speed panhandling between drivers and cyclists. So there'll be no need for residents to have to wait for the next traffic light or full stop to indulge their desire to give, Anderson said. This all really is about ways we can best serve the customer. What's more fun than a nice Sunday drive in the country? A parade? Staying at home and watching cars on TV. 
How about something that lets you get a little air? Sucking the helium out of balloons! Oh, I know. Turning just the fan on for your furnace? No, I was thinking more about the Coma cultural tradition of creek jumping. Long before movies like Smokey and the Bandit and shows like Dukes of Hazard made creek jumping look amazing, the people of Coma used jumps as the primary means of crossing local waterways. However, Coma Mayor Dave Anderson's proposed budget, introduced this week, would replace jumps used by most traffic to cross Coma Creek with traditional vehicular bridges. Hopefully it makes getting across the bridge a nicer experience, Anderson said in a phone interview. We are behind on our bridge construction schedule by a few decades, so hopefully this money will get that process back on track. Anderson's budget allocated $1 million for bridge construction, and it would aim for the state to pick up the remaining $320 million tab of replacing bridges at the local crossings known as Jump for Joy, Jump Up, For My Love, and 21 Jump Street over Coma Creek. The proposal drew early and passionate opposition from town council member Jax Owen. How are the people in this town going to know they're even alive if they can't get their car 15 to 20 feet in the air, Owen said. Other speakers at Monday's town council meeting raised concerns about the impact on local businesses of scrapping the jumps. Those would include an estimated 900,000 in annual tourism and auto repair businesses in town. Stan Bargemeyer, Coma's historian, worried about the cultural impact of a jumpless coma. For the sake of our children and our children's children, don't take away an important touchstone that has helped bind our community together in terror-filled joy. This week we finally learned what mattresses are really used for in the following report by Coma News Daily's future news reporter Thomas Stephen John. I find all news pretty scary, and that's why I've stopped leaving my house or turning on cable news. But this news guy who sees future news events in his nightmares, that sounds safer. That's right, Dee. His peyote-fueled fever dreams bring you the following future coma news developments. This is Thomas Stephen John reporting pre-live, in that I'm reporting the future. Widespread disappointment will dominate among participants in this weekend's competitive mattress exchange. Coma Spring, the annual mattress-based competition where participants bring a mattress and the winners get to go home with the bed of their choice, will be held this coming Saturday. Participants' post-race views came to this reporter in a peyote-fueled fever dream. That doesn't surprise me. Marley Baumgartner said, about her impending disappointment with the used California King mattress she will win. Still, if you don't play, you can't win. The race was started six years ago during the depths of the recession by coma resident Sadie Cracker as a way to find affordable replacement beds. Winners have the highest combined score from five races, including the 50-yard mattress carry and three-legged race across a field of mattresses. If years of sleepless nights from blown springs and jaw-dropping sticker shock from new mattress presses aren't enough to motivate racers, then nothing can, Cracker said about the race. Maribel Davis will be one of many racers to drop out of the race after face-planting on several mysterious stains. I have never been so uncomfortable and comfortable at the same time, Davis will tell a friend after the race. She will go home with the consolation mattress from the Coma Hyatt. Now it's time for the Medical Mosh with Coma Physician Dr. Jimmy. When it comes to your diet, there's a lot of information out there on what you should or shouldn't eat. Part of my job as a physician is to help people cut through the clutter. I recently completed a self-funded study on the popular notion regarding breakfast being the most important meal of the day. And I'd like to take a moment to share some of my findings. As it turns out, Breakfast is not the most important meal of the day. In fact, it may not even be in the top five. That said, based on my research, I can say with certainty that breakfast is in the top 10 most important meals of the day. My study was conducted over the course of two weeks in February of this year. I interviewed nearly seven patients and asked them to rank for me their favorite meals. Additionally, I thought not about what meal was my favorite, but which one I would be least likely to want to miss. The results are quite shocking. Here is what my research has determined are the top 10 meals of the day, in order of importance. Number one, dinner. Number two, 
Snack between breakfast and lunch. Number three, lunch. Number four, brunch. Number five, dessert. Number six, unclaimed food in the work fridge. Number seven, midnight snack. Number eight, snack as you are preparing dinner, perhaps sampling the meal as you are cooking it. Number nine, breakfast. Number 10, samples served at grocery stores or Costco. While the research may surprise some, there is no denying the conclusion or the scientific method that was employed to make this discovery. As I say to all my patients, you can live forever if you choose. Do you ever wonder what's in the towns lost and found? This resource has been helping people reconnect with their misplaced effects for years. As a community service, here's an item that was recently posted on the Lost and Found Bulletin Board at Town Hall. Lost, my travel safe, somewhere in downtown Coma. It's a beige, yelpy safe, and I think I left it in the Coma Foot Bucket fast food restaurant. It's very important I get this back. The safe contains more than 10000 in cash and several important documents including credit cards, social security cards, and more. If you think you might have this safe, please try entering the code 542317. If the safe opens, then you have my safe! Please return or email me at byron at townofcoma at gmail.com if you have my safe. Thank you. Today in Coma History, we learn about one of the best kept secrets of the American Civil War, the invention of the parachute, developed and tested in coma by Colonel Matthias Barnaby Rothschild. The first parachutes were constructed of burlap and chicken wire. Although the technology was never deployed in battle, it resulted in numerous and debilitating injuries to the first paratroopers. It led to the establishment of the first of its kind, 32nd Coma Airborne Brigade. A fundamental obstacle to the success of early parachutists was a lack of elevation that left insufficient time for parachutes to open properly before the paratroopers landed at the bottom of the coma grain elevator. It would take more than half a century and the invention of the airplane before the parachute was successfully used in combat. The pioneers of the 32nd Coma Brigade, although rarely recognized, certainly paved the way for future soldiers. We've reached the point in our broadcast where we take a moment to thank some very special people. Chicken buyers! That's right, they donated to Coma News Daily Reporters and Editors so they can forego begging the streets this week after they were bought a chicken by some of our town's loyal listeners. Chickens were purchased by Terry from Tennessee, Gil from New York, and Seth L. from California. If you'd like to toss some poultry to the hardworking denizens of Coma News Daily, check out the donate button at the top of Coma News Daily homepage and thank you for your support. This week, septuagenarian and Coma News intern Stan Bargemeyer shares a little more of the diverse and hard-won expertise he has developed over a lifetime through his regular column, How to Anything. How to Anything. Become a Brain Surgeon by Stan Bargmeyer. Surgeons make really good money. Did you know that everything you need to do to be a professional surgeon can be done at home? Follow these simple steps to launch your career as a successful brain surgeon. First, you only need two items, a stethoscope and books. Second, read a bunch of books on surgery. A lot of these books can probably be found at the library or something. Three, that's pretty much it. Put on your stethoscope and you're all ready to go. Go operate on someone's brain. Now it's time to hear from a wonderful humanitarian and the publisher of Coma News Daily, Davis Montgomery III. Queries and Quizlings is an advice dispensary presented as a community service by Mr. Montgomery. Dear Query Guy, how can I make my son become a professional football player? I've tried everything to make him good at it. I got him everything under armor. I cheered for him every morning when he eats his breakfast. I pause the TV on Tom Brady and say, that guy married a supermodel. But my son's four and he just doesn't care. Is there anything I can do to make him care? I played football in high school, married a cheerleader and then divorced her when she got fat, and then I married a 7-Eleven clerk. Now I coach at the local high school, 
sell insurance in my day job, and more than anything in the world, I want my boy to love everything I do. How do I get him to care? Signed, Man, I Love Football. Dear Milf, the common notion that you can pick your nose, you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family, encapsulates both your problem and solution. The problem is not that you are fixated on an obdurate offspring, but that you are fixated on a non-viable aspiration. Try focusing yourself on an achievable objective, which in your case, may be a son that is a secondary school graduate, or who earns enough to subsidize your dotage. These are not glorious options, but they may prove more realistic than the lottery-based retirement plan, or dream hoopty repair enterprise, about which you have droned on endlessly to family and co-workers. More likely to occur is the thoughtful solution cultivated by my delicate petunia. Hit it with a hammer. In your case, my dear Milf, this is likely to occur to you, not by you, in a dark alley behind a liquor emporium. Good luck and good riddance, QG. That's it for us this week, Coma. For more daily news, check out our publication's news site at townofcoma.com. Until next time, be good, beware, and be newsworthy, Coma. <laughs>